You just press play on the Last Breath Hunt cast, home of the Huntroversy. We're here to entertain, educate, and engage. And in case you didn't know, you only live once. But if you do it right, once is enough. Don't waste it. Okay, everybody, we are live. Welcome to episode number 48 of the Last Breath Hunt cast, home of the Huntroversy. Um, my name is Grant. I'm one of the podcast hosts. Garrett is actually at work right now, so he'll be in on episode number 49. And if you guys are new and you just are hearing the intro for the first time, you will know that we heard or said the word um, controversy in it. So what a controversial topic is, because this is the home of the controversy, that is a debatable topic within the hunting community that uh, we're going to be talking about and discussing. And sometimes it's going to be a topic that we can agree to disagree on. Sometimes it's going to be a topic that is highly debatable, kind of like the old uh, topic of which broadheads you shoot, mechanical or fixed. That's really hot, and it has always been hot in the hunting community, especially the bow hunting community, and that's what a controversy is. So we're just going to kind of, as good as we can, as well as we can, dive into it from a non-biased standpoint and try to cover all the sides and kind of try to at least see what the other side is seeing and why they're making the argument or the thoughts that they have. Because I think that that's the most important thing that you could do as an adult is kind of trying to mentally better yourself and understand other people's point of view. So I think that's pretty cool. And uh, this is a controversy. So this is episode number 48, like I said. And kind of funny, uh, the last time Garrett, Jesse, and I were up here doing a controversy, um, episode number 48, five or 46 on outdoor YouTube content. We were not interested in the idea of this, um, a video podcast that is because we thought who's going to want to watch us sit in our podcast studio and have a discussion. But a bunch of people said that they wanted us to do it so that they, we could, they could physically see what we were up to, um, and things like that. So there is a video podcast version of this on YouTube and, uh, We've had discussions about it, and kind of another benefit of it is there's lots of our fans that are older, maybe not as tech-savvy, so now you can go and listen to our podcast on YouTube as well and see this version every Monday, just like the one that's live on Spotify, Libsyn, and iTunes, so you guys can watch that there as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, but before we do, we want to remind you guys that the Last Breath Huntcast is brought to you by, by Last Breath Media and Last Breath TV. That is our company, and yeah, that is the uh, person that brings this podcast and makes it possible. So if you guys are into outdoor hunting content, which I suspect if you were listening to this podcast that you are, you should go check us out on YouTube and Carbon TV. Interesting thing about Carbon TV, actually, we were just recently nominated for three Carbon Awards. Um, so apparently Carbon TV this year wanted to have an award system and there's 13 categories and you could be mac nominated for a maximum of three awards. Um, so we got nominated for three categories and that was best deer hunting. So that's a clip of Matt and uh Oh, um, we got nominated for best moment. Um, that is Matt and Jesse when they killed phantom and Matt and Jesse when they killed uh Oh last time. And then Best rope dope moment, which is a, a moment that looks like you're failing, but you end up succeeding. And if you have not seen the hunt of Geronimo for Geronimo, that's the deer that Garrett and I killed about four years ago, his biggest buck ever. And that one is our third category. And then the President's Award, which is the best overall show on there, that's a fourth category that we could stand a chance of winning. But nobody's m nominated for that. The president of Carbon TV, Jules McQueen, she nominates people for that. Um, so... We're going to go ahead and get into our controversy now, and it's going to cover a topic that's really, it's hard. It is really hard to argue about a topic from either side because there's so many holes in the argument, and this is one topic that is going to take us a while to hash out, so this is actually going to be a three-part episode. This is the first part, just our general thoughts on, on the topic, <clears throat> and then we're going to have guests in to discuss it on topics uh, the same topic on episodes two and three, parts two and three. And the topic is, and this has been raging going on in the hunting community for years, eating what you kill 
and the ethics behind eating what you kill. So basically, as a hunter, as a fisherman, as an outdoorsman, most likely at some point in your hunting or fishing career, you're going to go out into the field, <clears throat> you're going to harvest, kill, whatever you want to call it, deer, turkey, small game, big game, waterfowl, upland hunting, fishing, and you're going to take that meat off of the animal back to your kitchen and eat it. And you're either going to like it a lot, like most people do, or maybe you won't. And it's pretty much agreed upon in the outdoor community, I think, that there's a big benefit of eating what you kill and taking it back to the kitchen for yourself, your friends, your family, because there's a lot of pride in that. You know, you, you practice your, <clears throat> you practice your cast and learn how to get that roll cast when you're fly fishing right into that area where the trout are circling in the river, or you shoot your bow every night before you go to bed or every weekend before shotgun season comes up, you go out and you make sure your gun is driving tax at 200 yards. There's a lot of pride and preparation that goes along with coming, becoming an outdoorsman and being one. So eating what you kill is like, Hey, we're sitting down around a dinner table and it's like, man, I know exactly where this meat came from. And there's a lot of pride in doing that. So I got an interesting story for you guys first. And, uh, that's, this is more so from like the financial side of it. <clears throat> so my uncle, my uncle Ty taught Garrett and I how to clean a deer at the age of 14. I believe that we were. And since then we have processed around 80 deer on our own without, uh, taking it into a locker. And, that's about a hundred bucks a pop. And that's kind of on the low end to get a deer processed. And that's about a savings of about $8,000. It's pretty easy math. And there's a lot of free meat off there. Now I want to put free meat in air quotes for you on that one, because hunting is not a, uh, is not a cheap hobby. And we all know that neither is fishing. And, uh, it's, it's certainly probably not free meat, but I feel like you guys get kind of where I'm coming from there. Um, but that's pretty cool. And the same thing with our turkeys. We eat all those, all the fish we catch, we eat all those. And when we're lucky enough to go out West, when Garrett and Jesse, Matt and I, <clears throat> Jeff and Logan go out West and we go antelope hunting, mule deer, Jesse's bear. Um, we eat all of that too. Me personally, as well as Garrett, he actually just cleaned a, a hog the other day. So that's pretty cool. He's learned how to do a deer and now he's taken that knowledge and transferred it over and has actually used it to clean a hog. So him and Logan butchered a hog about four weekends ago. So now they have a bunch of pork and that that's pretty cool. So we usually don't buy beef unless we need to. And that's kind of how we feel about that. And the same thing pretty much with everything. And I know a lot of people listening are the same way. You don't necessarily buy like a domestic meat unless you'd like it, unless you really want like a ribeye steak from the grocery store. Um, you don't go and get one. You just eat your backstrap fillets or what have you. Um, but that brings me to an interesting point on pigs, on hogs. Um, <clears throat> so we went hog hunting when I was 17, Garrett, I, my uncle Ty went and we brought back all the pigs and we either ate them at camp or we brought them back to Illinois and ate them at home. And lots of people said that when we went down there to, to go hog hunting ori originally, they said, you do not want to eat a big boar. It tastes gamey. It tastes bad. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not really sure I, how I feel about that. Because going off of that point, and you know, I want to state that I am not a southerner. There are not boars that live in Illinois. Well, I guess in southern Illinois they have found boars. But it's not a thing that we do all the time. So you guys are the experts, not me. But that kind of argument, the the big boar tastes a little of worse bad greasy gamey whatever you want to call it there's a lot of people at least from illinois that i know that can say and that claim <clears throat> that uh there's a big difference in taste between a buck and a doe and they say that a bigger buck you can kind of typically taste it because it's a big game year I, myself i don't really i don't really believe that i can taste a, a huge difference um, and I, I think that's because of the, the way that I cook things like me personally, when I, most of the deer that I cook and clean and use to eat at home is seasoned. And I mean that by, you know, I eat deer tacos, which, you know, taco seasonings, heavily like salty, spicy, uh, spaghetti, same thing that masks 
kind of any kind of the taste when you're putting sauce on it. Chili, lots of people eat deer chili, enchiladas, um, things that are seasoned on the seasoned on the grill, etc. So all those things that I typically use and eat deer with, they're seasoned. So I feel like maybe that takes the edge off of it a little bit, and in terms of that gaminess that some people talk about. Um, but the strangest thing that Garrett and I have ever eaten that's not deer turkey and is kind of something that's a little bit, a little bit weird, a little bit out of the box, is pigeons. Um, so we covered this in last breath episode number 50, which is part of season four. If you want to go check that out on our YouTube channel, um, in that episode, Garrett and I, right at the beginning, um, in college, when I was uh, going to Augustana in Rock Island, Illinois, there's many overpasses because Rock Island is a river town. There's many overpasses, um, that lead from Rock Island to, Davenport, which is the Iowa side of the Quad City. So it's where Illinois and Iowa butt up in the northwest-ish corner of Illinois. And there's lots of overpasses there. And underneath the overpasses, I don't know if you guys have ever walked underneath the bridge before, but there's a bunch of pigeon nests up inside the rafters beneath the bridge. And Garrett would Garrett and I would go down there, and with our blowguns, we would hide in the bed of his truck and shoot them when they landed in their nest. Or if they were already in their nest, we'd try to shoot them then. And then we'd take the pigeons, we'd take their breasts out, which make, you know, if you guys have ever been like upland hunting before for like pheasants or quail, you'll know that the the breasts are about, you know, cumulatively, maybe like a, a larger one would be like a melon sized. And that's if you manipulate the shape. I know that a turkey breast, when you take it out, or a, sorry, a pigeon and a quail and a pheasant breast when you take them out are not the shape of a melon. I'm just saying roughly with my hands, it'd be about that size if it wasn't like the shape that it was. And I think that our pigeons were probably the weirdest thing that we ever ate. So we take those, we take them back home, soak them in water, and then throw them on the grill. And it takes a shitload of pigeon breast to feed two grown men. But I think that's the weirdest thing that we've probably ever eaten. And that was an instance where that's a pretty weird animal. There's not many people that will go and blowgun hunt a pigeon and then eat the pigeon breast. But we've done that several times. But I think the animal that everybody hunts that is the strangest that fails on this argument. Not fails. I don't want I don't want this controversy to make it sound like if you don't eat something that you're failing as an outdoorsman, that's not it at all. I'm just saying that nearly every animal that we've ever killed, we've eaten, except for this one common animal that we shoot one, two, three, four, five, five of a year. And that's a coyote. And I was thinking about this the other day, and I don't know why. It's one of the only things that we do not eat. Now, does that make us irresponsible? Does that make us unethical? If you have ever killed a coyote, do you eat it? Do you eat it every time? Um, For us, um, if it's a really pretty coyote, we will tan the hide. Um, Garrett actually just sent off a couple to get tanned at a a tannery just a couple weeks ago. A couple that we had shot over the years, and he's got a really couple, a couple pretty pelts that he sent off. Um... And he's also boiled their skull, but we haven't eaten it. So my question is, and this is the basis for the whole controversy that we're going to be talking about over this part, part one of this episode, part two and part three, is that should we as outdoorsmen be eating everything we take from the field? Um, And I don't really know the answer to that question. I can kind of see it from both sides, but... I know this. I know that when you're talking to a non-hunter, it sounds like a really, really bad argument. If you say, well, I eat, I eat deer and turkey and bluegills and crappies and bass, and I eat pheasant and quail and hogs and mule deer and antelope and bear and all these different things, but then you say, but I don't eat a coyote. Now, do you think that is because in American culture, dogs are, you know, dogs are the pet, right? And uh, man's best friend. And do you think that's because in American culture that a dog is so highly revered that we don't eat it? I don't know. I I seriously do not know the answer to this question, guys. But I know that if you're going to say, well, I eat everything I take out of the field, that you should better be eating coyotes if you're going to make that statement. But But is that unethical? Is it ethical? I don't know. 
And then that brought me to another thought as I was kind of, I was thinking about this usually as I have my best thoughts in two different places and one is in the shower and the other one is when I'm driving. Both is, are when I, it's nice and quiet or I'm alone by myself and both that's where I do most of my good thinking, that and in here in my office. But that brought me back to this. So when you guys were little, probably as a listener of this podcast, you had a BB gun. And maybe you got a BB gun between your 8th and 14th-ish birthday, right? <clears throat> BB pellet gun, whatever you want to call it. Small gauge shotgun, 22, whatever. Something small. But eventually, you probably cracked a bird or two or 10. In Garrett's case, a whole flock. He used to go out and uh, <clears throat> the farm, his family farm out in uh, Henry County, Illinois, Warren County, Illinois, actually, um, would go and shoot birds as they landed in landed on rafters in the barn and me too i've shot plenty of little birds with my bb gun and my pellet gun when i was little i was jacked up about it but <clears throat> maybe you've killed a rabbit and a squirrel and i have eaten rabbit and squirrel and it's it's pretty good i've put both of them in the crock pot and seasoned them and it was pretty tasty but i have not eaten like a little blackbird that i've killed before or a robin, or anything like that. So should, should I have? Does it make me unethical that I didn't? For those of you guys that are, <clears throat> you know, more so towards the eat every single thing you kill side of this, do you eat robins, blackbirds, etc.? Like when you were little, did your did your dad, most assumably grandpa, force you to eat that? Um, or did you not? I don't know. I don't know what the right thing is there, you know, because if you're going to preach this, <clears throat> let's eat what we kill mentality to your kid. Cause most, most likely if you're a person that hunts, it got kind of passed down to you. D was that a, is that an idea that we should be passing on that every single thing we kill, we eat because if it is, then let's band together and do it. But I just don't know what the right thing here is because, I mean, should we be eating coyotes that we take out of the field or should we not? I, I just don't know the right answer to this question. So is it unethical then for a, for a little 10-year-old kid from Pennsylvania to go out and take his pellet gun and shoot a blackbird off of a telephone post or something like that? I mean, should he eat it or should he not? I, I don't know. And that's a really challenging and tricky thing. Um, and then when I was thinking about that, I was thinking, all right, let's, let's go for mice. Then everybody at one point or another has probably put a mouse trap out in their house, garage, barn, whatever. I mean, I'm guessing you're probably not eating the things that you kill in that regard. You're probably not <laughs> opening up a mouse trap and field dressing out a mouse so that you can cook them. But I don't know. So that's the basic argument. This question, the ethics of taking, as an outdoorsman, taking what you kill from the field and eating every single thing, <clears throat> that's the ethics of this argument. And this is part one. So I'd be interested to see what you guys have to say about this. So if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on YouTube or wherever you're listening to, shoot us a message on Facebook or type a comment in the section below as a hunter and an outdoorsman woman, should you be taking everything from the field that you kill, that you harvest and eating it? I don't know the right answer to that question, but we're going to have more people weigh on weigh in on this on episode 49 and 50, which will be part two and part three, just because this is such an interesting thing to talk about. I felt it should get three episodes. So that's going to be what episode 49 and 50 contain. And that's basically the gist of part one. It's just to get thinking about this topic and thinking about the ethics and whether or not it is ethical for someone to go out into the field, kill an animal and not eat it versus being more ethical if you go out into the field and eat something. And for those of you guys that have eaten everything, have you eaten and do you continue to eat coyotes? Do you continue to eat like small, small birds that typically people do not eat. Um, what's your What's your thoughts on this? Drop us a comment in the section below. Like, 
I want to know about this because I just don't know where I stand. It, I can see both sides. Um, but that brings us to our would you rather question. And that is, would you rather eat a coyote? So take the all the meat that you can off a coyote. So at least in Illinois for us, uh, I would say a big, 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 big coyote would be about 40 pounds. But most of the coyotes that we kill are between that uh, 32 and like 26 pound mark coyotes get the rap of being this big dog but they're pretty fluffy they're not very big um would you rather eat a, a whole coyote or a blackbird that you killed let us know um and our launch party um the date for the launch party has been rescheduled to august 14th or the 28th and we're gonna hopefully make an update on that this week um but due to the openings the recent openings in illinois and iowa you know how you have to be social distanced um, in Illinois, you at least still have to wear a mask. I think Iowa might have went at least on the bar and restaurant side fully open. But since they've done that the last couple weeks, there's been a big uptake in coronavirus cases. And so we're kind of waiting on the government to make a move um, and tell us whether or not, you know, whether or not August is going to be a feasible time to have it. If not, we'll just roll it back. But uh Yeah, that's our update on that. We're going to make a call really soon, though. Um, Thursday. Every Thursday, uh, all year long in 2020, we're launching a Throwback Thursday episode. So let us know what you think about those episodes. I think we re-edited 84 of those. So um, I think every one that we share has a killer two or three in it. So you guys should check those out. And uh, we just released our hand fishing episode for the year. We caught six big flatheads in there. And... uh, Matt, Nick, Jesse, and John, they all went noodling last weekend and caught a bunch of big fish. So we're going to have a lot more of that good stuff to show with you guys, uh, to share with you guys and show you next year as well. Um, and thank you again for listening to the Last Breath Hunt cast. Um, if you'd like to stay what we're doing, uh, stay linked into what we're doing on a daily basis, then check out the Last Breath Inner Circle. That's Garrett's Facebook group he made and uh who approved you to be a part of that group and then you can see what we're up to on a day-to-day basis and like i said this the video version of our podcast you can listen to it or watch it on youtube if you'd like that'll be coming out concurrently every monday with our podcasts like normal um so that's something that you could check out on our youtube channel if you want want to see what we look like (laughs) um if you don't already know what we look like and our last breath live that's our series that we have i've Got a couple episodes waiting in the chamber. I just don't know how I want to release them yet, but that's going to be coming out very soon as well. And that's that's a video version of what we're doing. So our first episode is how to electric fence a food plot and uh, the things that Garrett and I bought and how we fenced in our food plot. So those videos are going to be going up as well. I just don't know when yet, but I will let you guys know. Other than that, Thank you again for listening to the Last Breath Huntcast, home of the Huntroversy. Uh, the next two parts of this Huntroversial topic will be episodes 49 and 50, and we'll get an, a bunch of other opinions weighing in on the ethics of eating what you kill and it being right or wrong to leave something in the field that that you did kill, even if it is a coyote or something that people do not typically eat. So like I said, drop us a comment below. Where do you stand on this one? This one's highly controversial and that's why we do this is because I kind of you know think it's foolish for me to sit here and say that I know everything because I certainly the hell do not but I would like to see what you guys think because there's probably a lot of good points that you guys could come up with or make but what do you think about this one let us know and we'll see you next time for part two of this episode don't waste it